Day after the news today, and we're going to talk to Chris Walters, who's a music education official with the Musicians Union, because we're going to talk about um, reading music, basically, sight reading, I think, as we used to call it when I did it uh, as a kid. But it looks a lot different now uh, than it used to. Chris, a very good afternoon to you. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me on. No, thank you. I know I'm going to tell you something which not very many people know about me. Is that when I was a kid, I used to study the violin. And so I used to take the old Royal Academy um, exams and I used to turn up down by the Royal mm. Albert Hall and I did uh, theory and I also did uh, practicals, you know. And I got up to grade five by the age of about 12 and then I chucked it in because I got a Saturday job. Um, but in those days, mm. I never saw anything like um, what I'm looking at now, um, which is a kind of weird looking <laughs> clock type face with loads and loads of different <laughs> signs on it, uh, some of which I recognise, some of which I don't. Have they changed the way you, you teach music now? They haven't changed it. Um, what we're talking about today is something that's a bit sort of high level. It's called the Circle of Fifths. And right. um, uh, it, I have to say, it's, it's been a long while since I've been asked to talk about it. And I was having a chat with your producer and I asked, why are we talking about the Circle of Fifths? It turns out that uh, it was the bane of her GCSE music and it, it unfortunately <laughs> made a drop of it. She's clearly scarred um, by so the experience. She yeah. To, yeah, she's scarred and she wondered if um, it would be possible to just sort of lance the boil you know one, once and for all so yes. i'm gonna have a go for you all right so yeah. i mean because what, what um, i was what i was used to seeing was say you know a treble clef uh, a bunch of notes you know crotchets and quavers and all of that um and and, and easy to read uh, instructions this appears to be more of a grid system almost tell us about it yeah it, it is it's a grid it's basically um and if anyone wants to look at this for themselves uh it, it, it's called the circle of fifths and we're just looking at the page from wikipedia yeah. so if you're keen on music theory you can look at that later um but it, this isn't notation the most musical notation is like a notes written down to help you play a particular piece of music this is more of a like diagram of music theory okay. which is intended to explain how all the different musical keys relate to each other and how the different musical pitches relate to each other. It's a bit like the Pythagoras theorem of music. Uh -huh. um, okay. I know you did Pythagoras on the plot a, a couple did. of days ago. Yes. But yeah, it's that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, I think it's better to approach it by way of something a little bit more basic, if that's all right. Sure. So you talked about your, your violin playing. I mean, you, you probably remember practicing your scales. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Um, I wondered if we could just talk about a basic music scale first. So yes. people might remember um, from the film The Sound of Music, the song Do a Deer, a Female Deer. It's mm. probably the most famous representation of a scale. Yeah. Uh, and in that song, uh, the scale goes, I'm going to risk singing it, it goes, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. So I was going to ask you, how many notes do you think there are in, in that musical scale? Well, I'm thinking there's eight notes in it because that would be an octave, wouldn't it? Yeah, there are eight notes in it, um, but the bottom note and the top note are actually the same. Ah. Um, so the, the bottom do and the top do are the same note, but just at a different pitch. Right. Um, so in a basic musical scale, we've got seven notes that sort of repeat. If I was going to carry on singing that up, I'd sing the same notes again up. And it's also the same on a piano keyboard. You could just keep playing up with the same basic seven notes. And a lot of pieces of music that we know especially the more simple tunes, just use those seven notes. Right. Um, so things like the National Anthem is an example of that. And then if you think about a piano keyboard, those seven notes are the white ones, and then you've also got some black notes in there as well. Mm. And they're sort of like the half steps between some of those notes. Yes. And they give you a little more sort of different colours and, and more complicated pieces of music might use those notes. Right. Um, and, and those are like the flats, the, the flats of the sharps, aren't the they? The flats of the sharps. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in a um, in a in one octave, as you called it, um, you've got seven uh, white notes and five black notes. Yeah. So that makes a total of twelve musical notes. And in fact, um, all of music or the vast majority of music just comes from those twelve notes, mm. all in different combinations, different orders. Yes. And it's kind of amazing to think. Uh, that all of music just comes from 12 different notes. Yeah, and would you always um, suggest that an octave begins with C, or could it be another another note that it could start with? Well, that sort of brings us on to the circle of fifths, actually. Yeah. Um, because every one of those 12 notes has its own musical key. Okay. And that is what the circle of fifths is trying to sort of, is a map of all the different keys. 
Now, the, the one that starts on C, if you're playing it on the piano, that just uses the white notes, but all of the others use the black notes in different amounts. Right. And the circle of fifths tells you which ones are most related to each other. So um, at the top of that diagram, we've got C major, yeah. and that's got no black notes in it at all. Right. And if you move either side of that, you've got G major and F major, and then they both use one black note. And then if you move around again, you've got keys that use two. So it's like a map of understanding which notes are in which keys. If that oh, okay. Sense. And so, I mean, as far as creating music is concerned, um, is the what does the fifth actually represent when you say it's a circle of fifths? What is a fifth? Yes. Um, well, if you go around that circle, all of the notes in the order that are presented on that circle are a fifth apart, and that just means five notes. So okay. if you go back to the do re mi, you've got do re mi fa so one two three four five. Yeah. So a fifth is pa, da, and that interval of a fifth. There's a special relationship in music because keys that are a fifth apart are the closest related. Mm. So on the circle of fifths, you've got C major and G major. They're a fifth apart and they're only different by by one note. You mm. add in an F sharp to get G major. Right. So, so if you're a composer, you can move your key a fifth in either direction and it's going to be quite similar to what you're using now. Right. But if you move by a different amount of notes, you're in a distant key where there are lots of different notes and it might be more difficult to modulate your music into that key. Yes. So quite a complicated concept, but uh, it is. it's kind of like the rules of physics of music in a way. <laughs> yes, it is. And I see that uh, around the bottom sort of half of the, of the, of the circle, you've got different sort of um, uh, sharps and, and flats marked out and, and different sort of um, uh, pieces of, of what you might uh, why might have in the old days called sheet music where um, you presumably yeah. would be able to mark the time that it's in, you know, whatever the tempo is. Yeah, that's right. I mean, when you see those, those five lines uh, together um, on this diagram, that is called the musical stave. And if you're reading a piece of music, not looking like a, a, at a technical diagram like this, but in, a, in an actual piece of music, those staves run on for lines and lines. And that gives you all the information that you need to read the music that you're playing. So at the front, there, at the clef, so it's a treble clef is the one on that diagram. And that tells you that you're playing in a higher register. Um, you can have bar lines and that helps you understand the rhythm of the music. Mm. And then the actual individual note heads will be higher or lower on the stave depending on whether you want a higher note or a lower note. So that's what musical notation is. It's like all the information that you need to play a piece of music or right. put into that. And there's no bass yeah. clef on this yeah. particular circle. Does that mean that there are other circles as well which look slightly different? Yeah, you could you could make a circle with a bass clef. Um, for the purposes of this, it doesn't like make that much difference. But yeah, it would apply to all the different musical clefs. Right. But you know, if I could just say one thing about this is that um, you know it's, it's interesting to talk about advanced musical theory. But if you're looking to get into music, uh, you don't need to start off by studying the circle of fifths. You really don't. Right. Um, yeah, you just need to just get one of those. Uh, you just need to get one of those electric organs that uh, composes music on your <laughs> behalf, and then you can just add to it, right? Yeah, exactly. You've composed your own music just easy that way, yeah. or or just just to enjoy music by playing it on an instrument that you enjoy, yes. and in the style of music that you enjoy. I mean, there's loads of some of the best musicians in history um, would never have read musical notation and understood the circle of fifths in this way that we're talking about mm. now. I mean, if you listen to their music, you can hear it underneath and they understand it on a deeper level. Yeah. Um, but they might not have approached music in this way, you know? No. So there's different ways to skin a cup of music. Oh, absolutely right. Well, listen, it's been a fascinating conversation. It's taken me back a bit as well. So who knows? I might go back onto the old garage band this afternoon and see if I can come up with uh, some kind of composition. Chris, thank you very much indeed. Chris Walters, music education official uh, with the Musicians Union. I've never seen a more complicated uh, visual when it comes to uh, making music. But have a look at it. Uh, we'll put it or tweet it out uh, and you can see what it actually looks like as well because it's quite a fascinating... Uh
and very complicated looking diagram. But as we just heard from Chris, you don't need to look at that in order to create music. And if you do have a laptop, if you do have uh, anything that's made by Apple, you will have GarageBand where you can actually create your own music and it's actually quite satisfying. Don't watch Netflix all day if you're locked down. If your children are uh, looking for something to do, give them GarageBand and let them uh, compose something and see if they can make up a tune. It's a great idea and it's a wonderful way to pass the time. And who knows, it might even lead to them becoming multi